What's good, Chiefs Kingdom, and welcome back to Kingdom Connects. As tomorrow we'll be diving straight into rookie mini camp. That means the rookies did report today. They did receive their numbers, they received their jerseys, their equipment. So we're going to be talking about that. And also, we're going to be talking about some of these contracts that these rookies signed today. But before we do dive into that, please be sure to subscribe to the channel as I'm going to keep you up to date on anything Kansas City Chief related that you do not want to miss out on. And without further ado, let's dive into these rookies. As I mentioned, today is the day the rookies started arriving. They started getting their equipment. But with that, too, I guess it's unnatured how it happened. But Kansas City, they basically signed most of their draft class. Actually, they signed everyone besides Sky Moore, Leo Chanel, and Joshua Williams. As for that, your 2022 draft class, they are signed and they are ready to go. And this is something we're not used to seeing, but it's also something... We should be getting more accustomed to because this isn't the old days anymore where you are going to be doing holdouts like the Jamarcus Russells, the Sam Bradfords, you know the names where they're fighting for big contracts. Nowadays, it's basically set in stone where you are picked is basically where your money salary range is going to be like. And I think I like it, that a lot. And I think a lot of the NFL and fan base are going to like that too. I wonder more and more as we get into this, I'm not going to say it's going to be anytime soon, but I can imagine where watching these contracts just happen the next day or happen the day of like, hey, you're pick 29. This is set in stone when you're making sign and that's how it's going to be there's not going to be no negotiation for these rookies anymore and that's why i'm surprised that almost everyone got signed underway but then again i'm not either because it's the new day and age now we just got to wait for sky Moore, um leo chanel and joshua williams and they need to stop being divas and get under contract <laughs> i'm just messing we know that's that's nothing to do with it but they'll be signed here shortly of course they have reported a rookie mini camp too and speaking of the mini camp like i mentioned it's equipment time that means we got jersey announcement numbers to go through and i'm gonna go through it on my phone because i didn't remember it all on top of my head so Bear with me. We're going to go one by one, and we're going to have fun with this. Let me pull this up. So, Trent McDuffie, we already knew this sneak peek. Number 21, he's wearing that prime time. Let's hope that translates to the field, and let's hope he's a baller on the field. Then we go to George Karloftis. He's wearing that Ben Neiman 56. Let's not disgrace number 56 like that anymore. We know 56 belongs to the legend Derek Johnson. And then you go to Sky Moore. This is actually... Weird. This is drawing a lot of conversations up for debate on social media. He stuck with his college number 24, which honestly, I love. I like it a lot. Is it, is it the traditional wide receiver number? No, not at all. Is it going to be weird seeing in that wide receiver? Yes. Yes, it is. Am I going to buy it? Yes. Yes, I am. And watch it set a new trend. Like these, re these receivers, any player, they get to have their number if it's available. I like it a lot because... A lot of players in college want their numbers, and now that they can tr translate it and bring it to the game of the NFL, I think that's cool. So I know a lot of people are like, I don't want my wide receiver wearing number 24. That's a running back number. Yeah, Melvin Ingram wore it last year too, and you guys thought it looked weird on a pass rusher. I loved it on him. But what's going to be interesting is if Melvin Ingram comes back, does he go to his eight? Because you know he loves those Kobe numbers. Or I don't even know yet, does Justin Ross, does he have his eight? Does Melvin Ingram get any of those numbers? Does Melvin Ingram come on the team because both those numbers are missing? I doubt it's that deep, but it's fun to see. I do believe the Chiefs will bring Melvin Ingram back when July comes, but Sky Moore, he's going to be number 24. Let me know in the comments how you guys are feeling about that because I'm liking it, but I know a lot of people are hating it. And then we're going to go to Brian Cook. He's wearing that solid number six. Now, if you're going to hit, like, that's, these jersey numbers are funny because six looks like saw it looks that looks like a safety number but that's not what it used to be back in the day and no one hates it but we're gonna hate 24 at a wide receiver just because it's different don't mean you gotta hate it you'll adjust to it and definitely when he's in the end zone we're gonna have fun with it and then we go to joshua williams let me i, I was doing so good off the top of my head not looking at my phone but here we are going back Joshua Williams, he's wearing that Armani Watts number 23. I think that's going to look solid on him. And then Leo Chanel, he's wearing that Dan Sorensen number 49. 
I would have loved this. I would have loved the number five. I would have loved his college number. And I don't even know if, I don't know the numbers that are retired for the Kansas City Chiefs because I thought Mahomes was going to take number five too. I don't think number five is retired, but I could be wrong too. But Leo Chanel, if he would have won more number five, ooh, I would have jumped on that in a heartbeat. And honestly, if he if he's a stud, I might have to get that number 49 jersey too because that's going to look solid playing out there with that death row and that cross on his arm. Ooh, that's going to be vicious. And then we're going to jump to Darian Kennard, the Cam Irving number, 75. Watch I mess that up. I don't even know, remember Cam Irving's number like that. But I think it was 75, and I couldn't think of any familiar Chiefs player that wore 75. Chiefs Kingdom, let me know if it's uh, number 75 on the Chiefs because I could, that was a hard one to think of. I did drew a blank. I, I just thought of Cam Irving, and I think that might be the most familiar face to wear that. Then we're going to jump into our next player, Jalen Watson, taking Chavarius Ward's number 35. I don't have too much high hopes on Jalen Watson, but if he could play like Chavarius Ward and let that number 35 ride hard, I would love it. And then the most interesting one that I found was Isaiah Pacheco. He took Tyreek's number. Number 10. Isaiah Pacheco, he's funny to me, and I like him. He's like slowly growing on to me. I, didn't, I knew a little bit about him, but I did not know too much about him. And when he came in, and then when he had his first like press conference, whatever you want to say, interview, and he said he's here to take a grown man's job. And then he goes out and takes number 10, knowing that a lot of fans, even though you're in a running back position, know how huge that number stands in this like Chiefs kingdom and in the Chiefs world. Like, you got a lot to live by if you're going to make this team and wear that number 10. But also, too, I like number 10 as a running back. And two, I want to bring this up for discussion, too. We talked about Sky Moore at number 24. Let's also go back to Tyreek Hill now, who Sky Moore is going to try to replace in a kind of sense. But I see a lot of debate on a lot of people were upset that Isaiah Pacheco took the number, but also, too, that the Chiefs would give it up like that. A lot of people feel like Chiefs should have retired Tyreek's number. One, it's too soon for any of that. One, Tyreek's still in his prime. He's not even 30 yet. And even though he's on another team, I don't think that's something you should retire. Do I believe Tyreek is the best receiver the Chiefs have ever had in the history? Yeah, I do. That's not up for debate. But also, too, it's just like if you go to different organizations, for example, Brett Favre, you know how I know all the stuff that happened with Brett Favre and all that, but it tends to go down the line. Numbers don't get retired like really quick unless you're an absolute legend with the team. Like I guarantee you, the day Mahomes retires, which hopefully is not anytime soon, that next day his jersey probably gonna be retired. Now Hill has left his imprint on the Kansas City Chiefs, but to have his jersey retired so quickly, like Priest Holmes' jersey is not even retired. We still see people running around with the number 31. 88, Jody Fortson's running around with that. Tony Gonzalez, I know a lot of Chiefs Kingdom don't like him no more, but he had a huge like impact on Chiefs Kingdom too. So that number shouldn't be retired yet. Could it be in the future? It could be, but right now it's just way too soon for any of that. So let's jump back down this jersey list, and it's actually our last one, which is also interesting too. Nazee Johnson takes Byron Pringle's number at 13. I like 13 for a safety. I think it's a solid number. I hope he makes a good impact. Like I mentioned in my previous video, I think he's going to be a solid gunner on special teams. I don't know why I feel that way, but I feel it. Like I feel like he's going to be solid on special teams. Something just tells me. I feel like that pick right there had Dave Tobe's name all over it. Like I feel like in round seven, Andy Reid and Brett Reed are like, hey, choose your guys who you think can make an impact on this team and let's run with it. Now other players too, not really others because the only one I remember off the top of my head and I don't have an undrafted list for you guys and unfortunately I'm sorry about that, but Jerry and Ely, he has the Eric Berry number at 29. That's going to be a fun camp battle to me is Isaiah Pacheco against Jerry and Ely or even just the whole running back group. It's going to be interesting to see how they go at each other this, uh, I almost said off season. It's not off season. It's training camp season time. We are getting there, you guys. We are getting so close to football. You can just feel it. Rookie mini camp starts tomorrow. I'll be back with you guys tomorrow too because I'm going to bring up a familiar face that I hope 
I have two more videos on him. I'm hoping that's the case. I'm going to talk about James Bradbury two more times, maybe one more time. He's about to be cut, it looks like. So let's see if it's really a possibility the Chiefs go after him. And if he does, of course, i got to make a video of us signing him. Why would I pass that up? But also, too, we need the season here. We're, we're really close. We're only a few months away. We're in May, June, and then July is training camp. That's when the fun begins. But rookie minicamp is going to be exciting. If we have any news that breaks during this weekend about rookie mini minicamp, you know I'm all over it. I'm going to keep you guys in tune so you don't want to miss out with that. So you don't miss out. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel because, again, anything Kansas City Chiefs related, I'm going to be all over it and keep you guys in tune. Please do like this video. It was a quick video. I just wanted to get the start of Rookie Minicamp underway for you guys and have fun with it. And with that, I'm checking out. Y'all take care.